Hi, I'm Sharon Bill. Welcome to my YouTube channel and welcome to my Theory Tuition series of videos where I lead you step by step through the ABRSM Theory grades. You will need your Grade 1 Music Theory and Practice Workbook and we're going to be working through that. We're on to the Bass Clef or Section E. I have loads of resources available to help you on my website. If you go to SharonBill.com you'll find some free PDF information sheets, they're in US letter or A4 and they will accompany this series each step of the way and so we'll be looking at sheet E so you need to just find that information sheet. On the website you will also find links to all my YouTube video tutorials and you can also gain access to information about the books I've made available. Um, there's a ABRSM exam theory guide where I give you some hints and techniques of how to make the best of your exam experience which is what we are working to by working through this booklet here and so now we'll crack straight on with section E the base clef which if you open your workbook you'll find that it's on page 8 and into page 9 we're just going to do the first part of this so there we are. So I'll just notate this E so we know that's the sheet that we'll be referring to. So grab your pencil, make sure your pencil's nice and sharp. You will perhaps need an eraser too and we're ready to go. Now the base clef is the clef that is used to you, uh, represent the lower register of notes, the bass low register of notes. So that will be for instruments such as uh, the bass guitar or the bassoon or the tuba or any of those low instruments. It's sometimes called or referred to as the F clef because it begins on that second line down which is note F. It can also be written in this sort of backwards reverse way. It's not a common usage though, so I, I perhaps wouldn't use that as such. This is the most common, but just perhaps be aware that this exists. If you just pop to your theory sheet E, you can see that I've given you some practice clefts here to have a little go at, although they are significantly easier to draw than the treble clefts. So if you just give yourself a little blob on that second line down and it's just a hook over within this stave system, don't go off outside of that. And then your two dots are specifically placed either side of your starting point. It's quite particular and the placement of those dots and where the clef begins. So have a little practice on these um, faded clefts for you to trace around and just have a go at hooking round and getting those dots placed and then by all means return to page 8 in your workbook and have a go at drawing some yourself. And just be careful where you place those dots, that's why you need a really sharp pencil. So if you're using a traditional pencil just make sure it's really sharp and so you can get the placement of those dots correctly. Okay, so now we're going to be looking at the notes of the bass clef. I'll just bring you back to this information sheet that you can download. If you haven't got it, go to SharonBill.com, it'll be there for you. Now, the notes of music notation always progress round from A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and then we go A, B, C, D, E, F, G again. It just keeps going round those seven notes. And so when you get from A to A again, you're now eight notes on and we call that an octave. So each time you get a repeat of the note name, it's an octave apart. And it's always placed at a particular point on this stave system. And so if you were progressing in step, it would be line, space, line, space, line, space as you work up note by note. However, if you perhaps look at the notes on the lines and the spaces separately, there's a more easy, more memorable system of remembering those. And it's as if everything's dropped down a line or dropped down a space from the treble clef. So whereas the treble clef space is spelt face, We've now dropped everything down and we begin with ace. 
So A is our bottom note, and then because we've got a space left now, it's perhaps easy to remember all cows eat grass. And so if you just remember all cows eat grass or whatever it is that helps you to remember that more clearly, that's your space notes. And for the allocation of the notes that are on lines, the treble clef was every good boy deserves football, whereas now it's all dropped down a line, so it begins on the G. And so if you remember good boys deserve football always, that will help you to remember the notes on the lines. And notice we've doubled up. We've already got our octave apart. And if you count in step, counting from space to line and so on, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You can see that those two A's are an octave apart. The same will be so with those G's as well. Everything repeats eight note intervals. And then if we want to extend that knowledge just outside of this stave system, because of course this only covers a certain percentage of the notes. There are lots more notes spanning out of this and we just have to use those ledger lines. So A is our top line, and so the next space will be B, A, B, and then if we want to extend further, there is our C, oh, there we go, okay, and then if we want to extend it off to the bottom of the stave, if G is our bottom line, the next door space working backwards will be F, and then to go back again a step, we need a ledger line, and that will be E. It's worth noticing, just sort of tying these two clefts together, here this C at the top of the base cleft stave, if you just pop back to sheet D and look to the C at the bottom of the treble clef stave, that's actually the same note. So this is where the treble takes over from the bass. So it's as if you've met in the middle. The top of the bass clef now gives you the bottom of the treble clef, and that's our meeting point. Of course, later with ledger lines and so forth, we can overlap, but that's just the crossover point that we're taking it from. So that, that C there is exactly the same note as this C here, as your bass clef has taken over to now descend further down. The point of having these different clefts is so that we can avoid using too many ledger lines. And so, if you refer to this sheet E, turn over the page to page nine, and we're going to just look at exercise two. And it's asking you to name each of these notes. So use the information sheet E to help you to answer this question. Press pause, have a go on your own and then I'll go back over this with you. By all means refer to the sheet but once you feel like you're getting a little bit more confident with the notes try some without referring to the sheet and just try and work them out for yourself. It's okay if you make mistakes, we're only writing in pencil, you can always rub it out and try again. It's always best to learn by your mistakes. So have a go and then we'll look at this together. So now I'm presuming that you've had a go of this on your own. It's better to try it first and make some mistakes. And now, just for the sake of ease, I'm going to just look at all of the notes on the lines at present. And that way we can use this little memory system of good boys deserve football always to quickly and easily work out those notes. So let's just look through these. So exercise two. This note here, the first note that they've asked us to answer, is on the line. So if you think good boys, that will be note B. And the next note is the top line. So if we work that little system out, good boys deserve football always. And the next one is the bottom line, good boys, so it's good G. Let's skip ahead, we'll miss the spaces, we'll miss the ledger line and we'll just look at this next one here which is the middle line. Good boys deserve, so there's a D. Remember we're always using capital letters to show note names. Okay, we'll skip ahead these next two and then this next to the last one is on a line. So if you think good boys deserve football, 
there's our F. So that's all of the ones on the lines within this stave system. And so now we'll have a look at the spaces. So just referring back to sheet E, you can notice it's all cows eat grass for the spaces within this stave line space system. And so our first one is here. So if you think all cows eat, that will be an E. Next one is a space, so all cows eat grass, that's a G. We'll just miss this ledger line for a moment. We'll miss this one which doesn't work within the line system because we've now stepped outside of that stave. And this one also we will miss. So the last one is the bottom space within the stave system. And so if you remember that all cows eat grass, this will be all. So this is note A. So we now just need to think a little bit more closely for these remaining three notes because these are outside of that little poem that we've used. And if you remember, we need to work and extend the note step by step to find this ledger line here. And so if our top line is A, the next space is B, and so the next line is C, and that's the C at the top of the bass, which meets at the bottom of the treble, and it's the same note in both clefs. And so there you can see that's our ledger line note C. The very fact that it's on a ledger line makes it quite memorable. So if you just remember that note as C, top of the bass, bottom of the treble, and that's a good reference point to remember. And so if that is note C on the line, the next space down is one below counting down from C, and so that will be B. And so that just leaves this one note here remaining to us. So let's just refer to sheet E to help us. We know that the bottom line is G, and so extending that backwards a step, the next note down on the space will be F, and so that gives us note F. And again, you can notice that we've got two note Fs, but they're certainly not the same note, and they're actually eight notes or an octave apart. Uh, so there we go, that's the notes of the bass clef. I hope that's been helpful to you. In the next video we'll look at exercises 3 and 4 where we're combining the knowledge of both of those treble and bass clef videos. I hope that's been helpful to you. I hope you've enjoyed it. I'm certainly enjoying working through this with you. If you can give me a like, that'd be really encouraging to me and subscribe to my channel to keep updated. And please do go to my website so you can access all of the resources there to help you and particularly these PDF sheets which accompany this series. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.